Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Never underestimate the importance of taking care of yourself. The Christian who is careless about his health is playing right into the devil's hands. Well, thank you for joining me today on Enjoying Everyday Life, where every day I teach the Word of God, and I believe very much that the Word of God has the power inherent in it to heal us, to deliver us, to set us free from bondages that Satan tries to put on us. Today I'm teaching, continuing a teaching that I started yesterday, what the devil doesn't want you to know. Yesterday we talked about how the devil doesn't even want you to know that he exists. He wants you to think he's a myth or a fairy tale or, or just a story or a Halloween character, but that's a lie. Satan is, is and represents all evil. There's so many bad things going on in the world today. I mean, our world is in such a, a mess, and it's not just one place, it's every place. And the devil's behind all the bad things. Yes, he works through people, but it's really the enemy working through the people. As long as we stay mad at people, the devil wins. But once we can look beyond that and know that Satan is the source and begin to deal with that, then we can become winners in life. He's a liar. The truth is not in him. He doesn't want you to know that he exists. He lies and he lies and he lies and he lies. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about how Satan is also the destroyer. He wants to destroy everything that God has in mind for you that is good. God is good, the devil's bad. If you don't learn anything but that today, it would be worth listening to the program. God is good, the devil is bad. Good things come from God, evil things come from Satan. But the Bible says in Romans 12, 21, that we overcome evil with good. Good is stronger than evil. That's the way that you defeat the devil. No matter how many bad things he tries to do to you, you, you be good. You do what God wants you to do. You do the good things God wants you to do. You be good to people, and you will just beat the devil up. You overcome evil with good. The Bible says that we're to be alert at all times. Well... I guess we wish it said some of the time because nobody wants to feel like they got to work all the time, but this is something we, we can't be sleepy, lazy Christians some of the time and hope that on those days when we want to be lazy that the devil will just leave us alone. Those are the days he'll take advantage of us. Be alert at all times for your adversary, the devil, roams around like a lion seeking someone to devour. Well, here's the good news. It doesn't have to be you. He's looking for somebody to devour, but it doesn't have to be you. For example, in Ephesians 4, the Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Interestingly enough, it doesn't say don't ever get angry. Anger is an emotion that's going to come up from time to time. But the Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. Don't give the devil any such foothold. If we let him have a foothold, then he can get a stronghold. So that's very simple. Don't go to bed mad. Whoever you're mad at, work through it. Get it settled. Pray. Get God to help you. Study the Word. Do something to get over it before you go to bed. Because if you don't, it opens a door for the enemy. You know, now, the enemy causes problems in our life. God doesn't cause our problems. The enemy causes problems. But to be honest, sometimes we're the ones who open the door. The Bible says that we're to forgive anybody that we have anything against. We're to forgive them. If you don't forgive them, then God can't forgive you. And then that causes all kinds of problems in your life. Boy, what would happen if we would just 
decide to believe the Word of God and do what it says. Wow. Well, that's hard. Well, it's not as hard as living in misery all the time. Now, 1 Peter 5, 8 in the Amplified Bible, I love it. says, be well balanced for your adversary, the devil roams about like a lion, roaring in fierce hunger, seeking whom he may devour. Balance in our lives is so important. That means that you do enough of everything, but you don't do too much of anything. One of the things that Satan wants to do is destroy your health. Believe it or not, the devil wants you to feel bad all the time. He cares about your body, and he wants to make sure that you are miserable and feel bad so God can't use you. You see, you are, as a believer in Jesus Christ, you are now the hands and feet of Jesus, and he wants to work through you. Jesus went to heaven. He's not here in an earthly body anymore, but he lives in believers. Your body, my body, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Get this. You are the home of God. God lives inside of you. Now, it's very possible that you've been a Christian for 30 years and never heard that. But that's what the Bible says that we are the temple of God, that we've been purchased with a price. That price was the blood of Jesus. The mystery of the ages, Colossians 1 says, is Christ in me, the hope of glory. Well, it is a mystery. Why would God pick human beings, weak, flawed human beings, to live in? Because he, he has to have a body to work through. If you're going to do anything in the earth, you've got to have a body. When your body dies, then you can't, you're gone. Well, the church is the body of Christ. He is the head and the church is his body. God works through people. God's working through me right now to teach you the word. God may want to work through you two hours from now to encourage somebody or to cheer somebody up or to pray for somebody. God has to have a body to work through. Well, Satan comes against your body. He comes against your mind. The mind actually is the battlefield. That's where we win or lose the war with Satan. He tells you lies. You have to know the truth. If you don't know the word of God, you're not going to have any victory in your life. I was a Christian for a lot of years, and I had no victory. And that is a big problem in the world today. People are not too impressed by Christians because so many of them go to church. They, they are sincere. They love God, but they don't know the word. And so, therefore, they don't behave the way they should behave. They are Christians, but they don't act like Christians. And the world needs to see Christ, and the only way they're going to see him is through us. You have a job to do. You have a job to do. I have a job to do. Every single one of us have a call of God on our lives. And we are to help reconcile people to God, be a good example. Well, stress. Wow. Wow. The devil certainly creates enough stress, doesn't he? The world is such a stressful place. Wow, 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 wow. Noisy, pressure, people want, everybody wants something else. Multitasking, try to do five things at one time. You know what? I can't do it anymore. I mean, my brain won't take it. I used to think it was a good thing to be a multitasker. But I think maybe God wants us to do one thing at a time and keep our mind on it, focus on it, do it right. And you know, I've found if I really keep my mind on what I'm doing, I can sense God's presence. But when I, when I get all divided up and I'm trying to do five things at once, all I get is frustrated. People don't get enough sleep. They have poor diets. There's too many choices of junk to eat today. And boy, I don't know about you, but I want to feel good. Is anybody listening to me today? Are you tired of feeling bad? Well, you say, I'm praying about it. 
Well, you know, it's good to pray about it, but you got to do something about it. <laughs> I think that's one of the places where we make a mistake. God tells us to pray. It says, having done all the crisis demands, stand firmly in your place, Ephesians 6 says. But do you have a crisis in your life and have you done what you can do? You know, God helps us do things. He doesn't do everything for us. And many times when you're feeling bad and you go to God and you're praying for healing, he may show you something you need to do. Well, if you don't do it, then you're going to keep feeling bad. Maybe all you need to do is go to bed a little bit earlier and get some rest. Stop multitasking. Stop arguing with people. Quit looking at all the negative stuff on social media. If you're going to listen to the news, find something decent to listen to. Don't just listen to all the craziness that's going on in the world today. God wants you to feel good. I want you to feel good. I'm doing everything I can in my life now to feel good. I want to feel good emotionally. I want to feel good mentally. I don't want to worry and be anxious about things. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad. I am determined to enjoy every single day that God gives me because you know what? We're all assigned a certain amount of days and when one is gone, you can never get it back. And you can either waste today or you can invest today. You can do something today that's going to count for eternity or you can throw the day away feeling sorry for yourself, being angry, being mad, being all stressed out and frustrated. Come on, I want you to think about what you're doing with your life. Satan is a destroyer. He wants to destroy your health. He wants to destroy your body. Your body and your health are very important. God works through you. He built an ark through Noah. He killed Goliath through David. He preaches through the lips of men and women. He encourages people through other people. Without your health, Satan may rob the world of the gifts that God has placed in you. Think about that. Wouldn't that be tragic? When Satan comes against your body, he is attacking the temple of God. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. I love that. <laughs> I, I hope you're listening to me. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Well, it, it doesn't honor God I don't, if I'm just broken down and falling apart. Now, I'm not saying it's your fault if you're sick. Maybe you have some disease or something has attacked you. But I am saying that for some of us, it is our fault if we feel bad all the time because we're not doing the things that we should do. In December of 2017, I got very sick. Something happened to my voice, and I was nervous, and I just had all kinds of problems. I couldn't eat. I, I lost, started losing weight. I just, I felt absolutely terrible. And you know what it was? I didn't want it to be this, but it was just stress. Stress from too many years of working too hard and not taking enough breaks and trying to be there for everybody. And I can't even tell you how many people that happens to. I'm not the only person it happens to. Well, I, I had to make some decisions that if I was going to be around for the long haul, I had to make some changes. Now, I believe I'm talking to some people today, and some of you need to make some changes. And you know who you are. You're thinking right now, Joyce, you're talking to me. And God's been telling you the same thing. Other people have been telling you the same thing. You know what? You don't have to please all the people all the time. It's okay to say no. I said it's okay to say no. It's better to say yes to God and no to people than to say yes to people and say no to God. 
Many times people will ask us to do something and we know that it's not something we're supposed to do. We're already overcommitted. And yet now somebody wants us to do one more thing and boy, we don't want them to get mad at us. We don't want to hurt their feelings. And so we say yes to another thing while our heart's screaming no. The thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. Never underestimate the importance of taking care of yourself. The Christian who is careless about his health is playing right into the devil's hands. Satan's weapon is suffering. He wants us to suffer. He plans to destroy us with suffering. And sometimes God permits suffering in that, not that he did it, but sometimes he doesn't deliver us from it as fast as we'd like him to because since we've gotten ourselves in trouble, we might as well learn a lesson. We might as well learn something that will help us in the long run. 1 Peter 4.12 says, Beloved, don't be amazed and bewildered at the fiery ordeal which is taking place to test your quality. Sometimes suffering comes into our life or trouble comes just to test our quality of faith. It's easy to trust God when everything is going the way you want it to. It's not hard to trust God when you're not having any kind of problems. But when your whole life seems upside down, that's when you find out how much faith you really have. Suffering incur, occurs when we endure a thing rather than running from it are trying to avoid it. And there's a lot of different kinds of suffering. Would you let yourself suffer and wait on God to be your vindicator rather than trying to get somebody back yourself? What if you heard that somebody had been talking about you and, boy, you wanted to go and tell them how wonderful you are, but God said, no, let me take care of it. Let me be your vindicator. Well, it's hard to wait on God. But, you know, you may make the problem worse by trying to straighten it out yourself. Second Peter, I mean, 2 Corinthians 4, 8, Paul said they suffered embarrassment, they were troubled and oppressed in every way. Well, you know what? They could have avoided the suffering they were going through by leaving town, but they stayed. I never really saw that until I was looking at these notes today. They could have left town. I mean, there were places that God sent Paul and told him before he got there, you're going to, you're going to suffer. And he could have said, well, I'm not going to go then. But he didn't. He took the job anyway. He took the assignment anyway. There were people who wanted to follow Jesus, and he said, look, I don't even have a place to lay my head. It's easy to say you want to be in ministry, you want to serve God, but are you willing to pay the price that you may have to pay? The Bible says that we will be persecuted for righteousness' sake and that when we are, we're blessed. Don't try to avoid everything in life that's hard. Hard things give you some spiritual muscle. 2 Corinthians 4.8 in the Amplified says, We are hedged in and pressed on every side, troubled and, and oppressed in every way. <laughs> but we're not cramped or crushed. We suffer embarrassments and are perplexed and unable to find a way out. But we're not driven to despair. You know, when you love God, there's always a, a but there. The devil may be trying to destroy you, but God is for you. God is on your side. You know, if, if you want to serve God, I mean, really serve God fully and completely, not just be a, a kind of a halfway Christian, somebody who goes to church on Sunday and lives like the rest of the world the rest of the week. Now, I, I will tell you, there will be times when people are going to make fun of you. You may lose friends. You may get judged and criticized. But wow, the Bible says your reward will be great in heaven. And a lot of times, you don't have to wait till you get to heaven. God rewards you right here. All these things happened to Jesus. He went through all these things. I mean, my goodness, he was spit on and beaten and made fun of and accused of all kinds of things, judged and criticized even by his own family members. 
but he didn't run away from the job that God gave him to do. I've been through a lot of things in my life. You might think, oh, I wish I had a ministry like yours. Well, you might not want to say that until you know the other side. There's more to it than just being on TV. Well, it must be nice to be on TV. Well, yeah, when you're talking to a few million people every day, that's just a few more million that could judge and criticize you if they want to. Somebody called Dave last week and said, brother, I just want you to know I've got your back. He said, somebody was saying some bad things about you and Joyce the other day, and I told him, you don't know what you're talking about. I know them, and that's not true. Why? You know, why do people want to say bad things about other people? The devil. The devil. Well, you know, when I heard that, I first started thinking, well, I wonder who it was. And you know what? I don't care who it was. I'm not going to try to figure out who it was, because if it wasn't that person, it would be somebody else. The Bible tells us that we must be willing, boy, like this scripture, I don't know. We must be willing to suffer wrong and still be kind, peace-loving, and forgiving. Oh, my goodness. The Bible says in 9.16, Acts 9.16, that God made it clear to Paul how much he was going to have to suffer as an apostle. But you know what? Paul took the job anyway. And I'm asking you today, Will you take the job that God has for you, even if it means that you may not be the most popular person at school or the most popular person on your block? Will you stick it out? Will you, will you stick through hard things and not run away from everything that is difficult? Let me close with this one scripture. Hebrews 5, 8, and 9. Although he was a son, speaking about Jesus, he learned active special obedience through what he suffered. We don't know what it means to obey God unless we're going to do it when things are hard. And his completed experience, making him perfectly equipped, it was his experience that equipped him the experiences that I've had in life have equipped me to be able to stand here and talk to you today. He became the author and the source of eternal salvation. Even Jesus suffered, but he didn't run away from the job. Will you trust God, no matter what's going on in your life right now, will you trust God? The devil's trying to destroy your faith. He wants to destroy your body. He wants to destroy your mind. He wants to destroy your finances, your marriage your relationship with your kids. But be alert. Be cautious at all times. Even though he roams around like a lion roaring in fierce hunger, seeing whom he may devour, make a decision that it's not going to be you. God loves you. He's got a good plan for your life, and don't you let the devil take it away from you. Thank you for being with us today. Al ontdekt... Bemoedigende gedachten voor elke dag. Joyce Meyer Nederlands. Het bekijken waard. The fabric of a culture is stitched together by its people. Here, in parts of rural southern Africa, some women are treated more like fabric scraps than important parts of society. It's very difficult. You see, if you don't have anything for yourself, people, they don't consider you. The family is saying, I don't have enough money to send you to school. Nobody wanted to marry you. You have to contribute towards this family now. So they clean and they do whatever they can, but they don't bring finances in, so. If you have a skill and knowledge for doing something with your own hands, it can help you. It can help everyone. What man discards, God polishes and shines. Now women here have an opportunity to learn valuable trade skills at the Create Hope Skills Center, and you can get involved to help make this possible for them. We realized if we don't start investing in developing the women, then um, it's really gonna be a limited impact we would have in the community. We then started the skill center, and for a start, we've got the sewing and we've got the leather work happening here right now. 
ginger, you can come in. This is our sewing side. Mama Alex. It's nice to meet you. Together with Reaching a Generation, Hand of Hope, the outreach arm of Joyce Meyer Ministries, is threading the needle to sew a beautiful new tapestry where women see their value and dream big dreams for their future. And I believe that God, when he looks at you, he sees somebody that he knows very intimately. You're looking at entrepreneurs in training, women learning trades so one day they can own a business and generate their own income. I was happy. I, I just said, ah, thank you, God. You have answered my prayers. I wanted to go somewhere so I can do a short, a short course of sewing. That's my dream. So when I had this opportunity, I have to grab it. Not only are these women learning to build a business, they're also gaining knowledge on how to launch children's churches in their villages. The Create Hope Skills Center is making it possible for women to earn their own money. Otherwise, options are limited. And then you, you, you hit it and then you sew with a hand. They would maybe farm in the fields, and we've had a few years of drought where when our elephants come through, I mean, in this region that we're in right now, there are multiple elephant corridors. So what elephants do for years and years, they actually would follow the same pathway to get through to the river. And then the village would be in the middle of this. And when that happens, is they would have a field, and the next moment elephants come in and they destroy your field, and that's your income for the, you know, for the rest of the year. Everything changes when God opens a new door. You can be the tool he uses to help these ladies prosper by doing what you can to invest in their future. I dream to be a businesswoman, yes, because it allows me to be able to not ask from anybody else, yes, to also help other people. I'm this one person who loves working with her hands. So when I heard about leather, that was something very interesting. And I was like very happy because I know how to sew, but this I've never in my life seen how they make leather and all. So it was, it was good. How does it make you feel when you look at what your hands have done? Special. <laughs> it makes me feel good and that God loves me so much that with my hands I was able to make all this. The most vulnerable women in the community are becoming the champions, pouring their love for Jesus into the next generation. We're very excited about the potential of where this thing can go as we start increasing the number of people that can produce in our part of the world. Reaching the next generation requires all of us to work together. It all begins with your prayers and financial support. Because of you, women and girls are transforming as they discover just how precious they are to Jesus and become equipped and empowered in Him. This is my product. <laughs> This one. <laughs> you know, the Word of God teaches us that if we are willing to share what we have, God can multiply that and make it into a lot more than what we started with. So please share. Help ons om andere mensen te kunnen helpen. Bel ons 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meijer.nl slash partner. Elk gebed en elke donatie telt. Samen veranderen we de wereld.
Well, you certainly don't have to look very hard these days to find things to worry about. If you turn on the news for even five minutes, you can feel like the world is just spinning out of control. That's why I'm so excited about my new devotional, Trusting God Day by Day. These devotions will help you change your focus from your circumstances to the truth that's in God's Word. You know, it's time for us to enter into the peace that God has made available to us where we can enjoy our lives. And that comes only from trusting God day by day. Begin je dag met God met de 365 overdenkingen voor het hele jaar. Bestel het boek God Vertrouwen van dag tot dag nu via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100.